Aloha, everybody. Um, OK, this wasn't a part of my rehearsal, but quick olalohava'i lesson. So K-U Okina, which is actually an apostrophe right there, so I got to be upside down. So it's one, like an upside down apostrophe, so it looks like one six. It's a, Okina is actually a glottal stop. So instead of going ku lelani, it's ku'u lelani. Raja? OK. So let me get into my talk. Um, so as a little child, I can clearly remember my mom and my dad pulling all my siblings and I out into the yard um, to do yard work. Because the yard work wasn't everybody's, or it wasn't only the guys' chores. It was the girls' chores and mom's chores and dad's chores and everybody who else came over to visit. Um, so while mom and dad would be working hard and my older brother and my older sister would be out raking leaves or doing something worthwhile, me and my little brother would be around the corner making mud pies. Yeah, so our mud pies would be these most colorful looking things with rocks and stones and pebbles and twigs and dried leaves. And we would love it. We'd love getting our hands dirty. And that was the best part. Oh, oh wait, look, that's the mud pies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is our mud pies. We look way better than that though. It wasn't all messy like that. We had one system down, we had everything organized and it was really easy to make mud pies if you never made mud pies before. So when we was old enough, mom and dad sent us, sent us out to Makaha Elementary. And Makaha Elementary was not my first school. Home was my first school. I would consider that my second school. Because in this place, I learned that I could get my hands even more dirty. Um, we had the privilege of going out to visit Hawaii no Makaha. That is an, uh, a farm that is actually right next to our elementary. And in... 1979, Mr. Gigi, he became one of the founders, actually, of this, of, this, of this farm. And, okay, so he was born in Italy, and he went into the Philippines to teach people how to grow food, and the president there didn't like that, so he deported him. After being deported there, he ended up coming to Hawaii. Here in Hawaii, he set his roots down deep into the Aina, and he set his heart into Hawaii and Omakaha. And in 1989, the president, no, not the president, the principal of Makaha Elementary at that time, he came over and he asked Mr. Gigi, hey, you like work with some of our students? And he said yes. And so in 1989, that was when Nakiki O Kaina came about. So that, that allowed the youth of Makaha Elementary to go to the farm and to get their hands dirty and to learn how to grow their food. So kids who grow vegetables eat vegetables, right? But not only did we grow vegetables, we learned all kinds of stuff. My, one of my first things I remember learning was learning how to drive a tractor. In kindergarten, I got to drive this tractor. And I got my tractor's license. Mr. G. Jordan, print them out, everything. Each student had their own little license. And till today, I still get that license. One other thing that we definitely learned from Mr. G. G. was the use of the sun not only to grow our food, but to cook our food. So we would put our food to warm up in the, in the solar ovens here, and we would go into the farm and work and weed and plant our seeds, cover them up, tell them good night, and come back to eat our lunch. Now, when we got old enough, like sixth grade, fifth grade or so, we was allowed time to like, skip class and um, help feed the animals. So we had cows and pigs and sheep, goats, um, ducks and rabbits, and it's so cool because not every little kid gets to experience these types of animals. They don't even get to feed them or know what they're being fed or know how to feed them. And at that age, we were learning how to make friends with these guys. Makaha Elementary has definitely taught me my culture, definitely started there. My, it's, it's normal, yeah, for any Hawaiian person to wake up and go into the aina and be able to pick their food and bring that back to the table to feed their family. And that's what I learned at a, at a very young age and it has definitely stuck with me. Definitely stuck till today. So after Makaha Elementary, I moved on to Waianae Intermediate. For me, I only had two years in this school, um, seven and eighth grade, but the best part about it was having field trips. So one of my most favorite field trips was going to Ka'ala Farms. The Kala Farms is located all the way up in Waianae Valley. And when you get to this point, well, in order to get to this point, you got to walk up this super steep, tall hill. And 
when you're there, you're like sweating and hot and breathing hard, but when you get there, you're totally caught off guard by this beautiful view. You walk up to this hollow that you see, and you see nothing but kalo patches just growing and flourishing and thriving with kalo. And not kalo just for one table, but enough kalo for a neighborhood or even the community. So some things that I definitely learned from Kaala Farms is this here is a kalo plant. And the part, the leaves, which is called the lao of the plant, is what we make lao lao with. Yeah? Everybody know what lao lao is? Raise your hand. You know what lao lao is? Yes. Good. Now the bottom part or the root of the, the kalo plant is the kalo or the root. So that is where we get poi from. Everybody know what poi is? You love poi? Oh, I love some poi. Okay? Now the midsection of this plant, the huli, is what we return back to the aina so that it can grow another kalo plant. Awesome, yeah? Through Kala Farms, we also did a lot, a lot of hiking. And the main thing we did on our hikes was check the water. The water, could we, we made sure the water was high quality and it wasn't contaminated because this water that was flowing from our mountain was going through this pipe into, back into our stream, through our low ecolos, back into the stream and back out to the ocean. So it is always important that we always went up to the mountains to make sure our water source was clean so that what it, whatever it nourished was safe for everyone. Now, one good saying that I've learned from Ka'ala Farms is that if you plan for a year, you plant kalo, because it takes one year to grow kalo. You plan for 10 years, you plant koa, because it takes 10 years. And if you plan for 100 years, you teach aloha aina. Yeah? So after Waianae Intermediate, off to Waianae High School I went, yeah? So right in my community I stayed, so I did four years at this high school. In ninth grade, I was pushed off into the ninth grade success academy, and I had one year's time to figure out how much or how I wanted to angle my boat to what path I wanted to lead, yeah? So I had a choice between all different kinds of academies, but I chose Natural Resources. Because in, natu in na the Natural Resource Academy, it broke down into majors. So the majors that I chose, or that was given to me to choose from, was marine science, food service, agriculture, and Hawaiian studies. But for me, what called my name at that time was Hawaiian studies. So my first day going to this class, and I walk into the room, and I see this teacher. And I looked at my pepa, and I looked at the teacher, and I was like, I get Hawaiian studies, but this, this haole Japanese guy is going to teach me Hawaiian studies. So, Coming from Y and I, kind of stubborn like that, so I sit down and listen to what he gets to say. Two years later, this guy became my best friend and a great mentor till today. So Michael Corose, he gave me this application one day, and he said, oh, what are you doing on your spring break? And I told him that I wasn't doing nothing, I was totally open. So after I told him that, he gave me this paper, this application, and he said, why don't you sign up for this? And I looked at it, after reading over it, it was a, a two-week spring internship for Ma Organic Farms. And I was reading this thing, I was like, I swear I know all the farms in Waianae. And it, it was right in Lulule, literally up the road from my house. So I ended up signing up for the program, I ended up getting into the program and experiencing it. After, after that, I graduated from Waianae High School, and I decided to enroll into their summer ramp-up program. So summer ramp-up is a phase, actually, we're in that phase right now at Ma'o, and we, we just recruited about 40 brand new interns. And these interns, this group of interns, are gonna test out the waters and see if Ma'o is a good thing for them or not. So there, I'm gonna tell you how a typical day goes for us. <sighs> but let me tell you a little bit about Ma'o. So Ma'o is actually an acronym. It means mala ai opio. And mala is garden, ai is food, and you, um, opio is youth. Me and I, youth food garden. I wonder who's growing the food. So a little bit of history about mao. Kukui and Gary Mauna Kea Fourth. In 1999, they began Ma Organic Farms. And for them, their the thing that they wanted to push most out into the community was social entrepreneurship, growing organic food, and youth that is for a sustainable Hawaii. And till today, we are actually still on that. In 2006, 
Ma'o had its first cohort, a first cohort where they actually brought in a bunch of students and they put them through college and that was like the beginning of time. Now today, we are on, going on cohort eight. So we got generations going, we got generations going. So for a typical day, for, for a typical day of an organic farm at Ma'o Farms, we start our day and end our day with a pool. Now the pool is like a horn. It's, it's made out of ohe, which is bamboo. Um, so it's a horn that each student, each farmer gets to learn how to blow so that they themselves can call everybody from the fields into, into one so that we can start and end our day. So the first thing we do is harvest. We gotta go into our fields and harvest all of our vegetables. Harvesting vegetables start at five o'clock in the morning and ends at about nine to 10 o'clock, depending on how much we have to harvest and who we have to harvest for. After all of the produce is harvested, we take them into our packing shed and we wash all of our vegetables. All of our vegetables is hand washed by, by our interns, by our farmers. Not, nothing is machine wash. And our process, we, we teach them this because it's, it's one you're not depending on a machine that can eventually take your job. And we teach them how to train their eyes to know what we're growing and know what is what in the fields. And we also are teaching them that the food that, we, that goes to our hands is for the next person. So we teach them about cleanliness, about sterilization, about handling the food and that it will go into somebody's home to be eaten one day. After washing happens, we pack all of our vegetables on that day. This, this harvesting, this kind of work happens three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And on Fridays, that tends to be our biggest day because we are also involved in three farmers markets on Saturdays. And after we pack our vegetables, all of our vegetables are delivered, delivered by our interns, not no middleman. We don't hire anybody to deliver our vegetables because it, it means a lot to us to know that it ended, it started in our hands and it's ending in our hands. So after, our orders are done, we go out to weed. We love to weed, that is where we get our most therapy, our most motivation, our most inspirational times where we get to learn from each other and get to learn who our people are. And after we weed, we weed some more because then again, there's deeper roots to learn and more things to learn from. And we learn from conversations, from mo'olelo, from storytelling. And after we weed, we weed some more because we are organic and we are, we, no, we don't use pesticides and we don't use herbicides and we are not genetically modified. So the people that take care of vegetables is our youth. And then on Saturdays we do farmer's market. We attend three farmer's market, Ala Moana, Kapiolani Community College, and out in Waianae, now located at Waianae Mall. So that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. On Tuesdays and Thursdays now, we are like sponges in the classroom, sucking up whatever knowledge we can that is in a classroom that we cannot get from outside. Yeah, whether it's looking up stuff, researching stuff, getting to know, know more people, making that network, making that connection so that we can further get knowledge. So for me, for me personally, in my, my journey through, through Ma'o, it was a two and a half year program, but in order to get my AA degree successfully from this program, I, I needed three years instead of two and a half, so I needed an extra semester. So through this program, they paid for my tuition at Leeward Community College and gave me a monthly stipend every month that I worked there. And I can honestly say that Ma'o has helped me get my first degree. And they were successful in that because knowing most or some would take more than two and a half years, they developed this IDA program, an individual, an individual development account. And it's where we made a deal with this company who would who would match um, one of our dollars to two of their dollars. And we could save up to $1,000 in our account. And if we were able to save up $1,000 within the time that was given, they would match each dollar with $2. So if we got to the $1,000 goal, we had actually $3,000 in our account. And the beauty of this account was that we could only spend it for education, yeah? So guess where that money went? It went to my last semester's tuition because they would plan ahead of time and knew a lot of people would not finish in two and a half years or not finish in the amount that were being advertised. So they intentionally set up programs. See, they match $1 to 
So because of that IDA program, I was able to reach my graduation at Leeward Community College. So amongst, this here is my farmer fellow graduates. And of, of this group here, only three applied to be, to further pursue themselves into Ma'o Organic Farms. And of the three, I was one of them. This is me on my first day as a co-manager. Co, it was like my last day as an intern. Same, same. Because as an, as an intern, we had that chance to teach our younger brothers and our sisters that came in. And as a manager or a co-manager, I am still being able to teach my younger brothers and my younger sisters. The kuleana went shift a little bit. The responsibility was more, but it became a great opportunity for me to teach. So currently, I am at the University of Hawaii, Manoa. I am in my bachelor's degree for Hawaiian studies. This year is a mural at Hawaiian studies. Every day I go there, I learn something new from this picture. There's something hidden. There's many things hidden in here, and I learn something new every time I see it. And it's never been noticed before. So with me being a full-time student and a full-time farmer, I am also a full-time parent. That's my baby making all the noise in the front. Kule aloha o kawai lani, the heavenly water that adorns my lovely lei. She is my motivation and my inspiration and the flame that keeps my fire going. She keeps it going so well that I am able to go to work and greet the sun coming up and greet the sun going down. And she, she's the one that allows me to stand along all of these organic farmers out in Waianae on the west side of Oahu to do what we are able to do today. And even though we, we, we are just starting, we're just hitting that tip of the iceberg, our classroom is never, it's always expanding. It's never stopping. And it's gonna keep growing. No panic organic.